Windows are one of the most common areas where we see leaks and water intrusion in homes and buildings, both for new construction and in older existing structures. The fact is that windows are literal holes in your building and are prone to failures. It doesn't matter if you have the best windows in the world, eventually those seals are going to age and fail, and will get water intrusion. But assuming that the window seals will fail at some point, the way that we install our windows and flash them can make the difference between a catastrophic leak and a long-lasting durable assembly. And there is is a right way and a wrong way to flash and water manage windows. In this video we're talking all about window flashings, the problem with a lot of window installations and why they fail, and walk through some best practice details to ensure that your home or building never sees a leak or moisture problem. Let's get into it. So I've got over here a mock-up of a standard properly flashed window assembly of ours, and this mock-up is at the sill corners, which is generally the location that we see the most amount of problems. But before we dive into this, let's first talk about how window flashings fail. A lot of windows back in the day, and even to this day, are being installed as face sealed systems. What does this mean? It means that windows were flashed and sealed on all four sides of the window on the exterior side of the frame or flange, and integrated to the WRB, our water resistive barrier. In former times, this would have been tar paper, now it's usually house wrap. Now, the problem with face sealing a window is that it assumes perfection in the system, and particularly the window unit itself. But if we seal or tape all four sides of the window unit, what happens when those gaskets and external seals fail? The window frame leaks into the rough opening, but that water can't drain out because we've taped the bottom flange, and even if we do provide a sill pan beneath the window unit, eventually water is going to make its way inside, and so that sill pan is either going to fill up with water, or that water is going to be held in tension, and you'll get the buildup of hydrostatic pressure, which will force its way into the imperfections of the sill pan. Take a look at almost any building experiencing water intrusion issues, and it's almost always going to be at the window corners around the sill. Water leaks in either through the window unit itself, or through an improper flashing at the head of the window, and it makes its way down and accumulates at the sill, and we tend to see a lot of rot damage around these locations. So let's come back to this mock-up right here, and walk through how this installation eliminates that risk. First of all, let's take a look at what's going on here around the rough opening. We've provided a slope to the sill using a ripped piece of beveled siding, but you could also use a double sill and taper that secondary 2x to, to accomplish that slope. But we want the benefits of a slope around the sill to drain water away from the wall if and when it gets inside. We are assuming imperfection and we're providing a means of drainage. Then you'll also notice this ripped piece of OSB. This is just a back dam or a physical barrier against water intrusion. It's not always 100% necessary, but it is best practice, and it's pretty darn cheap to install. Then we have some tapered shims which complement the angle provided by the beveled siding, and this is just to level the window unit over the slope sill while simultaneously providing a drainage gap beneath the frame. You could also accomplish this with some plastic shims which sort of look like door stops. Then we coat the entire rough opening in a liquid applied flashing. In this case we're using Viscon from Proclima. It's got a little bit longer of a cure time compared to other liquid applied products on the market, but it's very low VOC and it's got a lot of different potential applications, so we like this stuff, but you could use any liquid applied flashing around the rough opening. Now, the reason why we prefer a liquid applied product is because we can ensure a monolithic water control layer around the rough opening without having to do origami with tapes, or having to worry about fish mouthing or poor adhesion. That's not to say that you can't use tapes, there's a lot of good ones on the market, but we would insist that you use a pressure sensitive acrylic tape as opposed to a butyl tape or a rubberized asphalt tape, as they tend to lose their adhesion over time. Liquid applied flashings are pretty much foolproof, as long as you apply them with the proper coverage and thickness. You don't want to see any exposed wood whatsoever. Then, after the flashings have cured and skinned over, the window unit can be installed. Now, this unit is a flanged UPVC tilt-turn window unit from Europe, but you could use any flanged or flangeless window of your choosing. Just keep in mind that if you use a flangeless window, the installation is going to look a little bit different because you need to create your flange using tapes or seal the exterior sides and top of the frame with Baccarat and a liquid applied product. So we want to apply continuous bead of sealant or that same liquid applied flashing on the back side of the flange, but only at the jams and at the head. Remember, we don't want to seal the sill, otherwise we'll trap water. Also, we don't want to seal or cover up those weep holes on our windows. Those weep holes pressure balance the window unit and they allow water to drain out if it gets inside. Do not cover up the weep holes. Then we nail the flange in place. Sometimes these European flange units will also require clips to be installed on the interior. That's not the case with this window unit. 
and then we flash over the frame to prevent water from challenging that interface, and this can be accomplished either with tape or with some more liquid applied flashing. If you use a liquid applied flashing, apply it very liberally around the flange and make sure that the liquid applied product is compatible with the flange material. Some liquid applied products have poor adhesion to UPVC and fiberglass. Now, there's a few other things that we need to consider. Here in this installation, we're using a self-adhered WRB. This is not the same as a standard house wrap. This is basically glued down to the sheathing with a pressure-sensitive adhesive, and so basically it's bonded to the sheathing, providing a monolithic water and air control layer. This makes it very easy to flash to, and we don't have to worry about water and air potentially traveling freely between a mechanically attached house wrap and the sheathing. The other thing that we need to talk about is the head detail and how we recommend installing an additional head flashing or drip cap over the flashed window unit. Basically, this is a piece of flashing that kicks water away from the top of the window, and that metal flashing is flashed back to the WRB. If you're using a self-adhered product, we lap that self-adhered membrane over the metal flashing at this location so that all of our sheet goods are properly shingled. You could also use a liquid applied flashing to bridge that transition. Now, you're going to want to install your cladding over a drainage gap to maximize the benefits of all of this and to reduce the potential for water ingress. A drainage gap, which is sometimes referred to as a rain screen, prevents water from being held in tension against the wall when it leaks behind the cladding. Draining the cladding is not only code in many areas, but your building is going to last a lot longer because it won't be challenged with water. The same principles apply to windows, assume imperfection in the system, and provide a path for water to drain out. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at siri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.